Hi, I'm Antonio Sala and in this video we are going to give a basic hint on ellipsoids and relation with positive definite matrices. In this first video we'll discuss just basic definitions and motivation and we'll defer to a second video a detailed study of some of the properties. The basic idea is that ellipsoids are some geometric bodies which, as we will realize, are associated with positive definite matrices and quadratic forms and they appear in a variety of contexts, being some control problems one of those, but there are applications apart from control. Let us start with the basic definition of just a circle. You know, this equation defines a circumference in the plane and this defines a circle. So in two, three or n dimensions, this sum of squares less than one defines a circle in n dimension space. We'll nevertheless try to use matrix and vector notation because things will be more compact without summations. So if x is a column vector and x transpose is a row, the sum of the squares is x transpose x and, well, we can put an identity matrix in the middle if we wish so. So the unit circle will be the level set of the quadratic form associated with the identity matrix. Okay, just a complicated way of saying this high school content, of course, but Okay, let's draw a circle in MATLAB. If we create a two-dimensional symbolic vector, then this quadratic form with m equal to the identity is, of course, the sum of the squares. And the f implicit command just draws the curve in the plane whose points verify the equation that x transpose time x minus 1 is equal to 0. So we are drawing the boundary of the circle and well, here we have a circle with unit radius so the next thing is drawing larger or smaller circles so the circle of radius rho is this thing and well, if I divide left and right of the inequality by rho squared we can express the left inequality equivalently as the right one, in which we see that the relationship between the circle stuff is just that we must divide by rho to get the circle equation. If we put this into matrix form, we can write that summation in this, in this way. So the circle of radius rho is associated to the identity matrix divided by the square of the radius back to MATLAB, if I divide by 2 squared, this would mean a radius 2 circle, for instance. This is the new quadratic form, which equal to 1 describes a circle of radius 2, as shown in the figure. Good. So, this is sort of high school stuff. Why am I telling you this? Well, because let us see the motivation. In many problems, in control problems too, bounding the norm of certain signals or fitting some modules to least squares means that the sum of the squares of something must be below a given bound or, well, if we are optimizing, then the bound gamma must be the smallest possible. So that's behind least squares stuff, then, you know, least squares and the geometry of the circles are close cousins then. Circles are the level sets of least square approximations to something. In control, for instance, well, errors must be small or control actions mu must be small to avoid saturation or something like that. But, okay, when we are in multivariable control, then we may have different scalings, say one variable that saturates 
at one volt, but another variable that saturates at five volts. So the kind of expressions we wish to keep under control need some scaling, some change of units, so that all signals have comparable magnitude. So in this case of saturating at one and at five, we may conceive trying to minimize this expression to be lower than gamma as small as possible. And then this P matrix is a diagonal matrix, but not a multiple of the identity. And then minimizing this, it's sort of weight at least the squares. And then which is the geometry associated with this diagonal, but not identity matrices? Well, trivially, it's kind of the same of the circles after a change of variable. And indeed, that geometry is the geometry of ellipsoids, which are aligned with the coordinate axis. So let us imagine that we transform the original x1, x2 domain so that a point in this plane maps to a point, you know, double abscissa in the right hand side. And, you know, I leave the rest equal. Okay, then as x1 is tilde x divided by 2, then the circle in the original coordinates has this expression after the change of variable. What is it in the new coordinates? Well, it's kind of zooming out the original circle, and then we get an ellipse. If we do it in MATLAB, this line will draw the identity circle, and then, if I divide by 2, the first coordinate, as we are saying here, so, so the first element of the new matrix describing this inequality is 1 divided by 2 squared. Then, if I draw the curve in which this expression equals to 0, then we get this axis aligned to ellipse, in which the horizontal direction has been zoomed by a factor of 2. So this is the underlying geometry in weighted least squares problems. Of course, the general way of saying that is that, okay, each variable is zoomed sigma 1, sigma 2, and whatever, and then the original circle translates to this in the modified coordinates or in matrix form, the change of variable is multiplying the old coordinates times sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, whatever, in this capital sigma diagonal matrix. So, expressing x like this, x transpose x is equal to this stuff. So we have lambda in here, which is a diagonal matrix whose elements are proportional to the half axis of the ellipse, the zoom factors, squared and inverted. So, an axis-aligned ellipse is described with a quadratic form generated by a diagonal matrix with positive elements. Then we get this kind of ellipse. However, we may have some problems in which the weighting is not so clear. Imagine that we have some x variable that is multiplied by c to give me an output y. In control, we usually identify x with some state internal variable and y to some sensor, let's say. So if I wish to prove that my output y is in the unit circle, then as y is cx, the quadratic form in the x coordinates is the one generated by matrix C transpose C. But C transpose C in general is non diagonal. So we need to tweak a little bit further our definition. Indeed, if we have an axis aligned ellipsoid and we rotate it, then uh, we get a general ellipsoid whose definition is as follows. 
rotation matrices are orthogonal changes of coordinates, orthogonal matrices, the columns are an orthonormal basis, R transpose R is identity, inverse is the same as transpose, the determinant of rotation matrices is 1, because it, if, if it is minus 1, then there may be reflections inside. Well, the thing is that if I have x in unit circle, then sigma x is an axis aligned ellipsoid, and then I multiply all this stuff by the rotation matrix, then I get this x tilde with this kind of rotated ellipsoid, or ellipse in 2D case, that we are showing here. This is x, this is the ellipse once I have changed coordinates to sigma x, and this is the full change of coordinates. But, of course, reversing the change of variables, x transpose x less than 1 can be written as this thing. So this is the equation of a generic rotated ellipse or ellipsoid, not necessarily aligned with the axis. This line will draw a circle. This thing will expand the horizontal direction by a factor of 2, an axis aligned ellipse, which I will draw with this line of code. And then if I wish to rotate 30 degrees, this is the 2D rotation matrix associated to the 30 degree rotation. You can see that it is an orthogonal matrix because its transpose is its inverse. And as we saw here, in theory, I am crafting this P matrix, which is an arbitrary positive definite one. And then if I draw this latest ellipse, I get the final rotated ellipsoid. So this is the length 2 half axis, which has been rotated 30 degrees from the axis aligned ellipsoid. But if we recall from eigenvectors and eigenvalue theory, any symmetric positive definite matrix P has an orthogonal eigenvector basis, so it can be expressed as an orthogonal matrix times a diagonal matrix with positive elements times the inverse of the first rotation, so transposed because it's orthogonal, and then this means that any positive definite matrix has inside this axis aligned ellipsoid and this rotation, so we have the full definition of a generic ellipsoid in which an ellipsoid centered at the origin is the geometric body determined by a quadratic form generated by a positive definite matrix P given by this inequality. Any positive definite matrix P can be decomposed by diagonalization into a rotation and an axis aligned ellipsoid generated by capital lambda. So this is the most general definition and in this way we can handle this non-diagonal stuff and ellipsoid related problems that arise in robotics, manipulability, force or compliance ellipsoids ellipsoids in robust control, linear matrix inequalities, uh, invariant ellipsoids and the like, and the geometry of ellipsoids is also of use in many other contexts, from the pure geometrical interest that dates, you know, to the ancient Greeks with a fossil volume or whatever of the ellipses, astronomy and Kepler laws, the relationship we already hinted between the least squares problems and the geometry of spheres and the weighted least squares problems 
and the geometry of ellipsoids. And then in statistics, we also have so-called confidence ellipsoids in multivariate statistics that generalize the confidence intervals in the single variable normal distribution statistics, for instance. We also have some kind of strain ellipsoids in elasticity in material science, I mean an infinitesimal sphere in a material when subject to a stress deforms into an infinitesimal ellipsoid in some way. So, to conclude, in this video we have defined this generic ellipsoid and the theory of diagonalization tells me that if I have an axis aligned ellipsoid and I multiply by a rotation matrix, then I generate these rotated ellipsoids and any positive definite matrix can be understood as the rotation of an axis aligned ellipsoid and we have reviewed motivation to their study in control contexts and also in elasticity, statistics, astronomy, linear algebra and whatever lot of situations where ellipsoids may arise. So we end the video here. Thanks for watching.